So hello everybody on Facebook. There we go. Today we're gonna look at the sticks. We're gonna look at actually quite a few sticks, five, 10, 15, 20, 20 about 20 um, different sticks. We have uh, sticks that were picked um, by Carolyn, who's on today, uh, Giovanni, who's also on today. We're gonna look at the Mayan colors. We'll look at those in tubes. Which camera do I have? In tubes. The Mayans, anyway. Um, we'll look at granulating sticks, and then we'll look at some uh, uh, secondary sticks. So the sticks are, are quite interesting. They are truly a pan in your hand. It's one of the three different um, forms that we have. We have the tubes, the 15, the five. We also have the pans, and we have the sticks. So today we're going to be looking at the sticks. Sticks are um, very creative. And they're also, as you see, Giovanni used them and other people, other artists use them. You can take off as well as much paint as you want um, to get the result that you want. Daniel Smith. Okay. So if you have questions on Zoom, uh, please ask. And if you have them on um, Facebook, I'm going to ask if uh, Angela, uh, Letizia, Giovanni would forward your message. Sure, of course. Thank you. My uh, my Facebook just froze. Okay, no, now it came back live again. All right. So let's start with the Mayan colors. This one down, so I'll change this one to here. There we go. So we're going to be looking at um, Mayan violet. We'll be looking at Mayan blue genuine. Mayan orange, Mayan yellow, uh, Mayan dark blue, and Mayan red. So these are the ones we're going to be looking at. Um, the interesting thing, I just came back from, uh, from Mexico. I was in Mexico City in Cancun. And you can actually see the, the, the Mayan blue there, the Mayan blue genuine. So this one is a Primatec. P for Primatech. And the reason being, it's made in the same way that the Mayans made their Mayan blue, which is indigo infused into a clay and then processed into a pigment. These are called Mayan because they're from the uh, same process, but they were there and they're done by the University at Texas, but there's no pedigree to this. This one has a pedigree. It is it is how and what the Mayans used. This, because it's the same process, we call them Mayan, but they're not Primatex because they don't have the same pedigree as this one. So I'm, I'm asked that sometimes. So that's, that's the difference. So why don't we look at the Mayan? So the Mayan, when it's part of the Primatex series, but it's not a mineral. It's, it's an it's a indigo infused into clay. Okay. So let's take a look at that. Um, I think I'm going to use this plate. It has passed iridescence. So I'm going to take those off real quick so I can use it. I kind of like using these plastic plates. They last forever. Yeah. I, yes. Would it be possible for you to explain a little bit what infused in clay means? What does it, how do you process that? Ah, uh, the, so I can, I can tell you in general, I can also put a link. Um, essentially what they're doing is they're, they're mixing the, the, um, the indigo into the clay in a, in a very special way. They're drying it out and then they're processing that into pigment and that pigment then becomes used in the Mayan blue. Okay. Thank you. I, I, I visualize it as, um, 
as a clay container and the color inside, but it's not nothing to do with that, right? No, it's actually the, it's actually um, the material put into the indigo put into the clay. Then there's a whole process they go through. It's a it's a, um, it's, a it's a long process and make it into the Mayan blue. Mm -hmm. It's uh, no longer made anymore. The gentleman that uh, made it kind of invented it. The professor yes. is no longer alive. And the uh, process wasn't written down to be um, to, to others for them to be able to make it. So we have quite a bit of it. Like everything else, we buy everything in decades worth of material. Um, <laughs> But after that, there's, you know, it, it'd be, it most likely will not be available. I have a question about the label. Yeah. On the Mayan blue, it has a P on it instead of the flower. Yep. So the P means Primatech. Okay. And it's one of the Primatech colors um that are made with minerals this one however is different this is indigo infused into clay but it's still a very um, ancient process that were actually used by the mines and that's why we give it the permatech okay so all permatechs have that p in it instead of the the flower yes it just makes it that much easier to find when it's inside of a rack so if you're interested in okay. permatechs it's just easier to search for that Okay, thank you. Oh, that's a great question. Thank you. All right, so let's look at the the primit, the Mayans. Yeah, I think it's it's so impressive how people so long ago had a process of making paint, whether it was the Egyptians or the Mayans or the Aztecs or, you know, in Australia or just anywhere in the world. It's a, it's a very pretty color. So that's the Mayan blue. Mark, do you use the Mayan colors? Um, yeah, I got um, the Mayan uh, blue, the genuine one you got there, and then also got um, Mayan violet. I use them quite often, yeah. And what do you use the Mayan violet? How do you use that? For, like... It's it's not, I use it in landscapes. <laughs> uh, yeah, just a little... Um, it's a, it's, it's a softish color, so it's, it's not too overpowering. So it's a, it's, it adds a nice sparkle to landscape sometimes in the shadows. Mark, if you have any, we'd love to see one of your landscapes with it. If you have any handy. Uh, not here today, no. <laughs> um, no pressure, no pressure. <laughs> sorry. It's a beautiful violet. Look at that. It's pretty. John, since the Mayans are a family of colors, but they're not specifically the same process for all of them, do you find that they mix well together and get along? Could you use the family of Mayans, for instance, to do a painting, do you think? Sure. Yeah, absolutely. That would be a fun project to do. Yeah, I kind of like the, my, my favorite is still going to be the ultramarine blue, but I, I like the bright colors. I like, I like the, the Mayans are very beautiful. I must say, I really, really, really like the pyrals. Um, and even the cad use, my God, they are bright. So this is the Mayan blue genuine. This one is the Mayan violet. This one right here is the Mayan orange. And the one I'm looking at right now is gonna be the Mayan yellow.
Giovanni, do you use the Mayan colors? Yeah, um, sometimes the Mayan red. Mayan red, Mayan. because I am um, for the application for a mm, little bit mm, the mass tone. Uh, when I use the Queen Coral, I apply the Mayan red for the dark tone, little dark tone. I'll go to Facebook to see if anybody's saying anything. And for any of the viewers, do you, any of you use the the Mayan colors? And if so, do you have a favorite or an example? So that's the Mayan red. It's a it's a it's a light red. It's a pretty red. And the last one's going to be the Mayan dark. Ooh, that is dark. I like yours, Giovanni. That's really neat with the uh, the the violet. I like that granulation you have there in the corner. Yeah, it's pretty. They always remind they me always of the beautiful textiles from South America. From South America. Can you say that one more time, Carolyn? It was it was double speaking over the speaker? I think it's because I've got an iPad on. Oh, I, I think it's because the other camera is also connected to audio, Carolyn. Okay, I'll try to turn that on. Okay, thank you. So Carolyn has a set and she sent some of her artwork in uh, this morning and it's really, it's beautiful. Um, I think she'll be able to maybe show us some. Some of it are just uh, photos of it, um, but you'll see it's actually, they're, they're really beautiful. I'm getting a little bit of a fish envy because I see Buffy has, I believe it's a real tank behind her. <laughs> and then there's Carolyn who has a, a super massive aquarium. And I have mine. I, I love my salt water. They're just, it's a good way to relax. Okay, so this is, see how dark this right here, it really is the Mayan dark. It's really quite dark. That's kind of what they look like. They look like they're really quite fun colors. You know, we, we tried the same process um, here. We tried it with Egyptian um, Egyptian blue and Egyptian blue has a um, really good pedigree and history to it. And we, we have not been able to make it because when ancient peoples uh, made, made things, for example, the Egyptians used fire and they would stoke the fire up and it would get hot and then it would start to cool down. And then over time they would stoke it again to bring it up. That is just so difficult to do with modern machinery. When we put one of our furnaces at 480 degrees or 600 degrees, it will stay there forever. It does not go up and down. So the magic that uh, they learned over time was how hot for how long, and none of that was written down. So we made really pretty glass, but we were yet to make really good um, Egyptian blue. So still kind of a, a trial and uh, error error kind of thing with that. So I'm gonna flip back one more time. There we go. So those are the Mayan colors. Um, John, we have a question um, from Susan Little asking if you could explain again, what do the Mayan colors have in common? Why they are called Mayan? So the reason, so this one right here is because of history. It's the same exact methodology that the Mayans used to make Mayan blue. Um, the professor from Texas did uh, a lot of work with that, spent a lot of time, met a lot of people, looked at the actual um, colors in, uh, from, the, from the Mayans um, and created the same process. Very similar process 
because he's come from the same place, the same um, University of Texas, we just called them Mayan. So they don't really have a lot of relationship with this one. Um, so because they come from the same place and are made with a similar process, then would that be? No, the process isn't necessarily the same. It's because <laughs> it comes right. from, because this is really a historic process. They, okay. the, the, the manufacturer, if you will, even though it's a university, we'll call it the manufacturer, also made these other colors. And because they came from the same place, we just decided to call them Mayan colors. Okay, thank you. But they have no historical um, basis. Only this one does. Okay, thank you. You're very so welcome. Much. Yeah. So different than the quinacridones, which all share, you know, share the, the same molecule, just different alpha and beta particles or the pyrroles or the pyrrolines. Um, this is just, it comes from the same, the same uh, pigment manufacturer, if you will. Thank you. Okay, so you're very welcome. I'd like to show um, Giovanni's. Giovanni, can you show yours, please? Yeah, okay. And then we'll look at Carolyn's and if Buffy has hers, look at Buffy's and Angela's. Okay, I, I'm ready. Very nice. Okay, this is a um, simple uh, scan from my, my stick set. Uh, it's a matrix system, not modern. In, it's very important for me the uh, selection of color. I think my my box. Because uh, the the main important is uh, um, comprehend the, the primary color basic for me. Uh, I select this color because it's a, a central color in the um, in the range, and all of the sticks is a mono pigment, is one pigment, and it's perfect for creating all the shade, my uh, particular uh, detailing, and uh, mm, the particular scheme when I try now for a but this is a metric system, but the system when I use for create the all the tone, for example, when I apply the ANSA yellow medium on the first layer, and the second layer is Queen Acridon Coral is a, my perfect red. For example, when I create the under, little undertone Queen Cora, I apply all my red for neutral tint. I create my orange. Mm. Or apply the first layer in Queen Coral. Simple change the sequence. And create another type of orange. Cover up my light, sorry. It's little similar, but is the sequence is different for the light. Or sorry. Or Return back with Ansa yellow medium on the first. It's very pure and essential set. I remember all is not pastel, but it's a very watercolor in your hands and apply the second. or a light green or
this is a tallow green yellow shade is near to my yellow the green warm green simple i change all the sequence i create a multiple multiple color i remain with the answer yellow medium on the first and i the, the blue the cobalt blue is perfect center of blue in, in my range and i create my dark green or my warm blue oh i like that green it's perfect for creating multiple tones is is not considered a basic tone, but is fundamental tones. It's very essential for create. And the last, I have my one of the favorite black is total lamb black is a warm black. It's very important for me or the very dark tone. Yeah, black is black we have. To arrive at light. And create created with a little point of this black, the little undertone. On the old tone. It's very, very essential set for me. Usually I use the watercolor stick in my hand when I take with my tiny brush for the detail in my painting. But with this selection is very important because create all the tones, all basic tones all the, um, the grisel before the black. I use three color, for example, yellow, blue, and red. Uh, cobalt blue and queen color, for example, when I created the, the, the cool back, the grisel background. And for the warm, I use Ansa yellow, medium, and tallow green for this selection before the plum black. It's very perfect to create a grisade, a two type of grisade. Wonderful greens. Yeah. For example, when I create the, the cool, I'm mixing my cobalt blue. And Tallow green with yellow shade with a little point on it. And decide the quantity of the blue and green before wow. the black. Sure. Yeah. Uh, which one do you use? More uh, sticks, tubes, or tablets? Sorry? Please. While painting, which one do you prefer much more? The sticks, tubes, or tablets? My, my painting, I use mm, the, the stick, is uh, uh, the, the use of the stick in the second time when I created the detail or all the, the second layer. The, the face I used the, the, the tube or other pen. Or when I created the, the layer before black background, I use all the sticks the, in my ceramic palette, for example, and created the, 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 
my quantity of color for the background. But I use the, the sticks and the tubes connection. Okay. And it's perfect Thank you. for traveling. And I create my grisale, warm grisale. Giovanni, Laura still is asking if you could explain what the Grisel, Grisai, what that is. And she also stated that you have really taught her something new with your technique to applying colors and different sequences. How amazing it is that just a small change in sequence will change a color. The, the sequence is important because uh, mm, uh, depending uh, of the... Um, your quantity, your color quantity, uh, if you want. And uh, for example, in the in the my warm uh, grisale, I I have grisale is important because I decide before uh, application. I'm, I study my painting. In my painting, the major object have a warm light. I use more quantity of yellow and starting one layer of layer, uh, one layer of, of yellow and apply the little point of red and create a more warm result. Or my object or um, is a more warm, more, more uh, cool in the warm, apply more red, or change the sequence starting with red, with Queen Cora in this case, and apply a little yellow. And I have the, the perfect orange covering before the black. And when I apply for, in, in this case, the black wet on wet, I create the little brown, perfect warm brown. Or red and blue, for example, when I use the grisel, before uh, when I, uh, I have the object uh, only the glass, empty glass. Blue. And create the violet for my best reflection. Or when I prefer starting in the blue. and a little point of red and create the dark violet before the black. The sequence is very, very important in my, in my style because it depends your painting if you want. I change only the sequence. It's very different. If this selection is perfect for create all the tones. For example, I show now my little palette. This is my selection and I create before the little layer of lamb black very very little and in this case I have the little undertone 
before the color. Medium, Queen Coral, Coral. Now I Tallow Green, Yellow Shade. Green, yellow shade. Now, all the color inside cobalt blue. Cobalt blue. One black, strong to light. One black, strong to light. One black, strong to light. Very beautiful, Giovanni. We, we are losing you, losing your voice. Very beautiful, Giovanni. Um, someone's speaker is on. So it's having an echo. Um, so my speaker is on. So it's having an echo. This is my selection of this set. Thank you, John, for this opportunity. And in this case, I created a little undertone before the color. I have many, many possibilities. It's a five selection perfect for all the people. You make that look so easy, Giovanni. It's, it's your work is really beautiful to watch. Thank you, thank you, John. You're and so welcome. The last last possibility I have in my, for example, in my in my box, I create my box with the watercolor ground. Very beautiful to create my gradient. Giovanni, what is the name of your set? It's my, my selection. Um, it's called my selection. Yeah. My ground. That is so atmospheric, Giovanni. Yeah. So atmospheric, it doesn't even look you. <laughs> it's very, very perfect set. Very nice. Very nice. Voila. Voila. In my, in my box. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Giovanni. I love that. That was cool. <laughs> That's very nice. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, that was very, very nice. Thank you, John. Thank you for this opportunity. For oh, you are so welcome. Um, so now we're going to look at um, Caroline, so she's ready. Mm -hmm. Caroline, we're, we're trying to speak. We can't hear you. Yeah, her speaker's off. Oh. Let me see. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. Yes, you can hear me now? Yes. Yes, we can hear you now. Okay, perfect. All right. I've got my I've got a iPhone as well as an iPad on this morning. Um, trying to see the visuals while I've got the iPad. Um, filming what I'm going to show you. 
Um, I, I'm so grateful for the amazing things that, um, that John Cogley and his team, um, we, along with Catherine, have brought out for us artists to really explore. And when the sticks came to, um, to light, I, I, it was just so magical to be able to carry something, you know, simple, uh, compact, um, a quite a lot of pigment um, in one simple little carrier and take it ar around with you. And I really enjoyed my experimenting with the idea that sticks would be a new part of my watercolour world. Um, in, in that exploring, I did a lot of um, exercises looking at different ways to use the sticks. And I often um, use a stick probably a little bit different from Giovanni um, where I'll often just grab the stick and dip it in water and literally um, dilute the stick onto my palette and gives me an instant puddle of the colour that I need. And um, in, in doing so, um, I haven't, um, I've got the stick. It's a, it's a simple thing. I can put it back in its carrier itself. And now I have my, my little puddle of paint that I can use. Um, the particular different sticks, having some that granulate and some that um, have got the, um, the opacity, like neutral, uh, like um, titanium buff and things like that, gave me a really, really massive opening to explore some incredibly different uh, ways to use watercolour. Um, I love to actually draw with the sticks and I know it's not a drawing tool. It's really important to say it's not a drawing tool. However, the sticks do, um, do wet up so quickly um, that you literally can draw um, onto your page and it leaves a really different and unique mark. And it's not for all. It's not a typical watercolour thing, but I'm an experimental artist and I find that it's fabulous to actually use the sticks in so many different ways. So I, you can see that I could just simply, that pigment just melts down instantly on your page, but it also can leave some really interesting drawing marks within it. So um, in my experimenting, I also then uh, was a part of my dot card series where I had to, you know, really make those difficult choices of what is my favorite 18. And as such, I think I came up with 23 instead, or 22 instead of um, 18, because it was too hard to choose colors. So my dots, my dot cards um, are the formation of the stick colors that I chose and the stick colors that I've chosen as a great way of introduction for people who want to experiment with sticks is the group of, uh, I call them my, um, my marine environment or my aquascape um, group where I've got carbazol violet, I've got fallow turquoise, I have cobalt teal blue, I have quinacridone gold and I have neutral tint. And from that group, I can do some really cool and interesting things and mix many, many colours from that group. So exploring that group, I then took my colours into things like these um, swatch cards where I'll start with my original colour and I'll mix it with other colours like cobalt, teal, blue, where I know I can get this fabulous leaf green and I can make that more yellow or more blue depending on how much of the mix I get, just like Giovanni was saying, um, depending on the base that you start with um, and also by the quantity of the different pigment in the mix. If I go to neutral tint, my Quinn Gold gives me an olive. So I know Quinn Gold was a perfect option because it gave me lots of different greens without necessarily having a green in my group. I knew I could make some really fabulous greens. Covers of Violet was one of those ones that, well, do I do magenta? Do I do violet or purple? And all the questions. But I found that it's really hard to mix a really fresh um, violet and out of a tube or out of a stick gives me that pure color, which then becomes a great um, color standalone or mixing tool. So today I'm um, playing around with um, um, colors to show you how well they mix. 
I have mixed a group um, of Carbazole Violet and Thallow tur Turquoise. You'll see if I mix them together here on the page what happens. I get this fantastic blue and it's something that you just didn't realise would happen with these particular two colours. So you can see I've got both colours on the page. Now, if I wet out the opposite way, you can see the thallow turquoise is a dynamically rich and beautiful colour, as all thallows are. But when they come together, they actually make this incredibly beautiful blue. And that's something that I thought was a real surprise. Um, and so by understanding the colour group you've got, you actually can end up with so many more colours if you know how to mix them well. So um, my group, I think I really enjoyed the idea of it had to be limited. It had to be fun. I would, do, I would limit it to a group of things that I love to paint. And what I really love to paint is um, oceanic things along with rocks. I'm really known as a rock artist. So um, with the oceanic things, I was just showing this morning while you've all been on the live, some of you might have been watching that I've been painting this um, little oceanic scene. So using the, um, the colour group, um, I've used every colour in this painting, even though it only appears to be three predominant um, colour shades because I've, um, I've done mixes within the group to give me the different tonal ranges of the blues in the background. Um, and then the dynamic contrast of the fish on the surface gives me that uh, almost like that black and white and cool sort of look. Um, I think the idea that the sticks are different from watercolour, well, they're not. They're the same as watercolour because they are watercolour. Um, but the idea of playing around with the stick that I can then draw into the surface and add dynamic extra things to my page, I think that is really, really, really very cool. And so I go to the sticks for the convenience of the pigment but it also goes on because I really love different mark making with my watercolours. And you can see I can sort of keep on adding either with a paintbrush or with a stick, lots of components to my work. And I've got this instant pigment in front of me that is just so dynamic. The, um, the sets that we have been invited to consider and put together were brought about by the idea that your students often ask you, um, what do I buy? What do I buy? But, you know, you know they can't afford to buy everything every week. So you've got to start giving them little sets. <laughs> and the idea is, oh, what's a great set to start with? And so the idea that I could um, come up with a set was a great mixing set um, was the concept of behind the first idea of having sets that are specifically um, um, suggested by different artists. And I really welcome the idea that um, a group of us different ambassadors were involved in this project because we all have different visions and we all paint different things in our environments uh, from different you know, parts of the globe. So we're influenced by different colors. So together the different um, stick sets can make some wonderful giant set so you can you know technically collect each of the um the ambassadors um individual suggestions and um across your bigger group as you collect each set you can end up with some amazing watercolor stick collection so has anybody got questions caroline what's the name of your set i've named my set um aquatic landscapes aquatic landscapes okay they are gorgeous anyway yeah, yeah it's a nice it's a nice group. It's an interesting group and a bit different from um, from what a lot of the others are doing. So um, it's nice to offer offer um, the artists out there something di a, a different vision to look through. And when you apply when you draw with your uh, uh, stick, is the painting the paint still wet underneath? I actually either wet the stick or wet the paper or both. Um, a dry stick won't work. It's not a drawing tool. It is pigment. And if you're wetting the pigment, obviously it's going to release and will give you the chance to draw. Um, alternately, 
as I was doing before, is melting the um, stick onto a little puddle on my palette would be predominantly the way I would use the sticks initially. And then I would add detailed features with the drawing into my artwork once the main painting has been put together. Thank you. That's okay. So great to be involved with all of this. It's so wonderful to inspire other people to um, try these fabulous products. Like that. Thanks, John. Brilliant. You are so welcome. Thank you very much. Okay, so let's see. We have Buffy's um, screen ready. Okay. Thank you, Caroline. Thank you, Giovanni. So now Buffy. I just want to say congratulations to Giovanni and Caroline and Besnick and Rajat for being chosen for this great adventure of trying to pick just five <laughs> colors <laughs> for each set. <laughs> as if picking 18 as a brand ambassador isn't hard enough, now yeah. try five. <laughs> Thank you, but Buffy. But what I thought was so cool was when I swatch out the colors, you can see some of the artist's personality shining through um, their color world. So this is Caroline's beautiful, did you say aquatic landscape? Yes, I did. Oh, it's oh. so pretty together. <laughs> and then we have Besnick's. And I thought that these colors were really soothing. I could see some beautiful landscapes with this. And Rajat is, there's so much granulation happening. <laughs> and then Giovanni's is bright and bold. And since we've spent so much time learning about how G Giovanni does layer his colors, we know that they start out this way, <laughs> but he can turn them into so many wonderful mixes. And I really agree with what Caroline shared about how artists are often asking, where do I start and what colors to get? And when you have a professional artist make these beautiful suggestions, it really helps you to, to get a good start on your paintings because they're looking at the colors, not so much as the individual, but like Caroline shared, how are these colors gonna communicate with each other into a painting? So um, Daniel Smith does come out with all these wonderful things that are always keeping us on our toes with new colors and new projects. So. I just think, I, I can't choose my favorite, to be honest. I love them all. <laughs> Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you, Thank Buffy. You, Buffy. That was very nice. Very, very kind. Thank you, Buffy. Fantastic. Beautiful colors. Thank you guys for choosing good colors. <laughs> so we can please look at Buffy's one more time. We can look at, so the first one is Caroline's. And so Caroline's is not, not necessarily in this order. Um, Carbazole Violet, the Thalo Turquoise, the Cobalt Teal Blue, and the uh, Neutral Tint. Neutral Tint. <laughs> Neutral Tint. Neutral tint. And, and so that's Queen Gold. And, and Queen Gold. So those are Ca Caroline's colors. And then the next ones. Um, trying to find the buff titanium undersea green. So that is uh, Besnix, which is undersea green. The quinacridone burnt orange. Carbozole violet. Moon glow. And buff titanium. And then Rajat's is the granulating colors next to that, which is sodalite. and Serpentine Genuine, and followed by Piemontite. I love that Piemontite. Yeah. And then Hematite, and then Lunar Black Genuine. So if we were playing Desses, you guys would get this like all the first time. So, and then the next one, which is uh, Giovanni's, is Lamp Black, followed by Hansi Yellow Medium, Queen Coral, Thalo Green Yellow Shade, and Cobalt Blue. 
Thank you, Buffy. That was neat to actually do that, talk about that, and actually see them all. So thank you very much. So those are the various colors we've seen the job that um, Caroline and Giovanni have done in mixing them and just the many, many different shades they have. And the reason I, I when I talk about the sticks, uh, if I'm doing a presentation, I say they're not necessarily a draw, drawing tool is because for the, for the population in general, well, almost anybody could pick up a guitar and they would strum the strings. <clears throat> Very few people have the, the courage to pick up a brush. So you're kind of in a league of your own. So to, to take that, that one of the, the blocks away, it's just, I don't say it's a drawing tool, but as Caroline was saying, you absolutely can draw with it if you like. Um, that's not necessary. You can use, as Giovanni does, a pen in your hand, um, as Carolyn does, wet into wet, etc. cetera. It's, um, it's a phenomenal creative tool. And I think that's what's, what's unique about it. You can use it in the same way you'd use tube colors or pan colors, but it's also, because it's tactile, you can have it in your hand, it becomes also more a creative tool. So thank you so much, everybody. Um, Carolyn, thank you. Giovanni, thank you. Buffy, thank you. Angela, Mark, and I'm going to forget people. And if I do, I'm sorry. There's like quite a few of you watching. It's so great to uh, to see you. And thank you for joining today. Um, tomorrow we have uh, an artist. Penny. Um, Penny, yes. And Penny is from Mallorca, Mallorca um, Island off of Spain. So it'll be interesting to see Penny. Um, I look forward. I hope you can all join. But with that, thank you, wherever you're at in the world. Thank you for joining us. For some of you, it's early. For some of you, it's late. Um, I appreciate so much seeing you. And thank you for joining in and bringing your energy. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you, John. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.